it's me again. Uh, if you watched my last video, uh, I was talking about how I uh, sank this boat here when I flipped it. Um, today I want to talk about what I did to recover this engine here so that it's still uh, salvageable. Um, the most important thing that I want to mention is once you drown a motor, which this one went under the water when it was running, uh, absolutely do not start it again. Um, if you do this and there's oil and water mixed in the oil reservoir, you're going to wash out the bearing. These are the things you're going to need. A can of WD-40. Uh, just regular oil if you're using a four-stroke engine. Uh, spark plug remover tool. This is the one that came on my motor, so I just keep this on the boat with me at all times. And preferably uh, compressed air. Also, you're going to need a uh, box or something to put underneath the engine if you don't want to get oil or gas on the uh, ground where you're working. And then you're going to need a uh, oil catch container and a fuel catch container. Obviously you're only going to use oil if you're working with a four-stroke engine. These containers I'm using here are Arizona tea. Uh, they're very thick plastic that can handle the gasoline um, so you don't have to worry about them melting. Um, they're great all around for uh, catching different types of fluids if you ever need to do that. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is locate your uh, bowl on your carburetor. And you either want to remove the bowl or drain the bowl. Uh, I suggest move, removing the bowl completely to make sure there's no dirt or water in the bowl. Um, if you catch the fuel, that comes out of the carburetor in a clear, uh, say like a water bottle container, you'll be able to see if there was water in that fuel, it'll be laying on the bottom. Um, that way you can determine if any water was running through your fuel. Once you remove the fuel from your carburetor, you wanna go ahead and shut your fuel off. If you have a uh, fuel sh shut off switch, and then from there, you want to take off your air box cover and your air filter and just look inside to make sure that, you know, there's no water laying in here or uh, extra dirt. In my case, I had some mud that got up in there. Um, and then if you do have water in there, you want to make sure that you um, use compressed air or a rag and let that get dried out as much as possible. Once you're certain that you have your uh, air box cleaned and your filter is all clean, you can go ahead and put that back together. I'm just going to set this on here for uh, filming purposes right now. After that, the next thing you want to do is you want to remove your spark plug. So pull up your spark plug wire get your spark plug tool. I already have this loose. Let's make this go a little quicker. Once you have your spark plug pulled out, you want to go ahead and uh, once again be sure that your fuel shutoff is in the off position and also make sure that your kill switch is in the off position. From there you want to start just pulling that or uh, cranking. I don't know if you're going to have a recoil start or an electric start, whichever it may be. Um, you want to just pull that as much as possible so that you can get as much of the water. You'll see the water shooting out of the spark plug hole. Okay, so once you're finished getting as much water out of the um, spark plug hole as you can, you want to take your WD-40 and just shoot it in that hole. I mean, it doesn't matter. Fill it up if you have to. Um, just spray it around real good. Um, if you have a straw for your can, that helps a lot. Once you're done spraying the WD-40 in the spark plug hole, you want to come back over to your recoil 
or your start and uh, you want to just continue to, to pull it or crank it over until you no longer have a lot of um, WD-40 shooting out of the hole and then from there you want to go back to your compressed air and shoot it all out. So once you're sure you got all the WD-40 out of the spark plug hole, uh, the next process is uh, you want to drain your fuel. And the reason you want to do this is just in case any water got in there also. Um, in my case, not much water did. Uh, my tank is pretty sealed, but there was a little bit in there, so I'm glad I drained it. Um, so you do want to drain it just to be precautious. And you're going to find the side of the carburetor. In my case, it's right here. That's where the um, fuel line comes out of the gas tank and into the carburetor. Now, you do want to note that it is on the opposite side of the uh, fuel shutoff switch. So there's going to be fuel spilling out of there as soon as you disconnect it. So be prepared with your container to catch the fuel once it comes out. Also when draining your fuel, uh, be sure to remove your gas cap. That'll help the fuel to drain out a little faster. Um, don't remove the cap until you have your line disconnected. Otherwise the fuel is going to flow out a lot faster when you're trying to disconnect it. Once you're sure that you have uh, all the fuel out of your tank, the next process is draining the oil. Um, on my case, the oil drain plug is on the very bottom here. It's a 10 millimeter screw. Um, you want to take that out. And then just like the fuel, you want to remove your oil fill cap once this plug is removed. Um, that'll help break the vacuum and drain it a little quicker. When you're draining your oil, you want to make sure you let it drain for at least a half an hour. Um, this will allow as much of that oil and water mixture to come out of there. Um, you really want to get as much of that out as possible. Once your oil is all finished draining, be sure to put your plug back in. You have your oil plug back in. You want to go over here to your oil fill and remove that. And then like I said at the beginning of the video, you want to have some clean, uh, just cheap, in my case I'm using Castrol GTX 1030. Uh, we're going to fill the oil reservoir up with that, make sure your uh, engine's on a, a level surface. Once that's filled, you can go ahead and put your uh, oil fill cap back on. And we're going to go over here. And you want to look at your plug and make sure that your plug is, um, if, make sure it doesn't have any water on it or uh, any odd corrosion. Um, if the plug looks really nasty, you'll just want to replace it. But in my case, I was able to salvage it. Um, I just used a little carb cleaner and uh, some compressed air and made sure all the water was out of it. And then uh, we can reinstall it. And then put your spark plug wire back on. Make sure it's down good and tight. Okay, once your uh, oil is filled up and you got um, your spark plug back in, um, be sure you reconnect your fuel line and make sure your carburetor bowl is back on and everything is good and tight. Once you know that it was all assembled, go ahead and fill it up with some fresh fuel and then you're ready to start it. Once your fluids are all fresh and uh, refilled and you have everything back together, um, you want to run your engine for about, I'd say about five to 10 minutes, get it good and warm. Um, try not to over rev it, just let it you know, idle and you know, maybe get a little throttle on it to uh, warm it up good. Um, once you do that, 
you're going to want to uh, shut it down and drain the oil while it's still warm and from there you, uh, you want to put new oil in it okay so uh, that's about everything um, hopefully by now your motor is running um, I just wanted to add the reason we use WD-40 is because that will chase the water out of any areas there might be water hiding and you cannot see so uh, don't be afraid to be uh, very generous with the WD-40 um, this will not hurt anything so hopefully uh, the video helped you out and please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time